Okay, hello everyone who is joining us live today or um, watching the recording of our first growth meeting this year. I'm for all of uh, those who don't know me, I'm Christoph and I'm running the growth, manage, manage, uh, growth meeting today. Uh, just a few organizational things. Um, the meeting will run for 45 minutes, so let's try to keep focused. Uh, first, also thanks to Chris Sacher, who will write down the meeting minutes after the meeting. And um, just a heads up, this call will be recorded and we will publish it uh, on YouTube afterwards in our new U YouTube channel. For everyone who is joining us for the first time, our growth meetings are about exchanging learnings and on how to grow the business network. And we decided last year in December that we are going to focus for the next two months on growing especially liquidity on BISC. Um, as we didn't have any uh, experiments over the holidays, um, our agenda today will differ a little bit. So um, we will discuss um, how to bootstrap uh, US dollar and other new markets uh, on BISC, for example, China, and discuss the possibility to use BISC bounties for new currencies. So thanks, Felix, for, for bringing this up. And also, uh, if there's time left, we are going to talk about the criteria for marking issues as BISC bounties in general. Um, for everyone, um, if you have any remarks or questions, just feel free to ask any time and join the discussions. Um, as we had some issues on the, on the network over the last couple of weeks, I'm not sure if Chris, Chris, are you ready? No, Chris is not there. Okay, um, I think we'll ask him afterwards if we're now good to go to run new liquidity experiments. Maybe uh, in the meantime, uh, Felix, could you talk uh, a little bit about your ideas on how to approach uh, new markets? From the current point, you, you had a, a couple of ideas, so. Uh, Felix, I'm not hearing you. Does anyone hear Felix? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Now it works. Right. So, um, really, to get things started, you need a collaborator who's in the country where you want to start because some of the issues, unless you're on the ground, you will never know that this payment system doesn't work or nobody uses it or uh, the, what, the app is blocked by the firewall of China or something like that. So, Ideally, you need someone from that country to collaborate, to come to Slack or to come to GitHub and to answer these questions and ask for stuff. Um, what's the best way, I think, of maybe attracting such a person? Uh, I think a bounty for the first trade is a good idea because uh, if someone does the first trade for Indian rupees, for example, gets a reward, that will, first of all, get him involved in BISC. If he runs into trouble trying to do the first trade, he will ask for help. Um, if he discovers that something doesn't work, he will tell us about it. Hi, right, Chris. And, um, and yeah, there's some countries where we have no one at the moment. So I'm thinking Nigeria. There's been a few attempts to do a first trade in Nigeria. Maybe encouraging the trades in the past, but nothing much. And market hasn't hasn't appeared, which is strange in my view, because now that centralized exchanges are being closed in China, we should be getting tons of traffic. Um, I don't have any data on downloads from China, but maybe uh, you or Chris know a bit more about that. Anyway, to cut things short, um, I think it's worth a try, might not work, but it's worth a try to offer BSQ rewards for several countries where it's harder to get some collaborators and maybe post those in social media in the hopes of attracting someone who will try. Uh, to, to approach or to get the mes message out, uh, last year you did some, some quick experiments on, on Facebook, running Facebook ads. Was this a kind of successful or, or was it just very expensive? 
ads which allow better targeting by profession and by region and by city, it was completely useless. It was worth a try, you know, I yeah, spent sure. my own money, I thought it was worth a try, but uh, a handful of clicks, thousands and thousands of impressions, but just a handful of clicks, and I doubt any of those translated into any downloads. So no, complete uh, voice of us. Yeah, re regarding downloads, um, I can have a super quick look, but uh, I don't think that we have have lots of downloads um, at the moment um, from China, at least. So we do I had a conversation with some, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. I had a conversation with somebody, I think, at, uh, at Chaos a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember who it was, but we were talking about China and... And they had some experience uh, and, you know, they were just telling me about how, how vibrant the markets are, whether it's, you know, just kind of like low tech OTC markets over WeChat or, I mean, if, if you probably know 10 times as much as I do, this is just secondhand, you know, news. I mean, it's obvious stuff, but, but they weren't surprised that we hadn't seen some rush for this because there's basically systems that are working well enough, right? even though they, you know, I'm sure they come with their own, Downsides, right? Um, but I guess well, we, we want to is the big issue in China. Normally, right. if you trade, you need someone to vouch for you or to prove you to a channel. It's tough. So having mm -hmm. and local bitcoins is doing plenty of volume in China. So BISC should have its niche. Uh, but the th the key thing is to have someone there who you can ask. Try this. Try to download the app. Try to post an order. Try to do a first trade talk to a friend and try to get him to do a trade with you and uh, get it started. And if they find out that the fees are too high or that they have plenty of other options, fine, that's good enough. But we don't have that information. We're guessing at the moment. Yeah, yeah. so, so we, we do have some, some downloads from China, at least from, from the website. We, have, we had in the last month 200 and roughly 220 downloads, but yeah, no, no trade or no offer so far, I think as far as I remember. And, and what about traffic to the website? Um, yep. Traffic to the website is much more, much stronger, but also it, it's in, it was in total 1,609 people uh, over the last um, month. Yeah, do, do we have any personal, just in our network contacts? I mean, ideally somebody who can take what we're talking about here and turn it around into you know tweets in the, in the correct language right you know or, or whatever the correct medium is um I, yeah I, I don't have unfortunately i have a couple i'm trying to get them interested they're doing other stuff at the moment so yeah. we're in no rush but if i manage to convince them to at least try it i'll yeah. make sure to get their feedback yeah i mean that it, it'd be amazing to have uh you know, essentially the, the how to buy, you know, Bitcoin for, for you on like you like you put in there and to have that to have that in Chinese. I mean, this would be amazing. Um, maybe we can get there. But I, but I, but I like the idea uh, in general, it, even though it's coming in halfway to it. I think I follow. Um, it, the th one of the things that I like about it most is that I think it's just sort of the right style. Right. It's it, it, we have to find at least one peer out there, you know, who wants to who, who wants to give this a shot. And, and I think it's about individual people, uh, you know, putting themselves out there and seeing if they can drum something up. I like that a whole lot better than ad buys, you know? It, it is a market. So, you know, one guy on his own is going to do nothing and get bored. Yeah. But if we can just break into one of the Telegram or WeChat groups and get, you know, one person to make a bit of a market and then someone and then to tell the other guys, hey, come here and try this. It's better than local bitcoins because of this or that. Then you know maybe something will happen. I'm also very surprised uh, that nothing's happening with India. Mm. Yeah, I, I've been uh, thinking numerous times. I just haven't had any bandwidth to do anything about it. About uh, Africa and Pesa, there was a flurry of tweets recently, where you know it's been about a month, two months now, from I think it was Kenya Coin. I, which I know nothing about, but didn't look disreputable when I, when I, I, I don't think, I don't even know if that's a, an ICO or anything. I think that's just the name of a Twitter handle. Um, and then um, uh, I won't get his name right, but, 
but uh, Chifi but, uh, Nguong uh, from Ghana. Chifi, I read his name. Yeah. Have you? Okay, yeah. I, if I recall correctly, and this was like over the holidays, is why I don't, didn't track it. Uh, I thought somehow he was mixed up in a disc thread on Twitter somewhere. Um, and then, uh, and then there's a guy who's been on the forum, uh, S. Gornick, uh, who uh, apparently has lots of hands-on experience with M-Pesa. Uh, and I asked him to go into some detail. I don't remember the details, but he did write a couple of paragraphs about his, you know, real world experience, I think in, in country with it and so on. So I thought, you know, just connecting the few of those people and, and see, you know, see what's in their network. Right. Um, but that's got to be, you know, a huge uh, potential, yeah. I mean, this is like the most ridiculous thing in the world to say. Of course, Africa is huge potential potential for bits, right? We just don't really have any access to it at the moment. Um, Chris, what about uh, the guy uh, who, who translate, translated the website completely and, and is running the, the, the Chinese domain? Do we have still contact to him or...? Haven't talked to him since that uh, since that that one event, um, but I'm sure we could look it up and and, and reach out. That's a good point. Yeah, because he, he seemed to be quite mot motivating motivated <laughs> translating all the websites. Mm -hmm. And now it now it's possible from, from from our side to trade. Yeah, I'm just taking some cheap notes in the text pad over here. I don't know if anybody else has a Google Doc or anything. How so? How do you guys feel about the offering a small BSQ bounty for the first trade? Not in every currency, but you know, in maybe Nigeria, Kenyan, um, Kenyan shillings, uh, Indian rupees, and a few others that haven't had any first trades. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I would. My first thought is, let's do it a few times for the first few trades, right? You know, I'm not, I'm not afraid of. Uh, I don't think people are going to mount a sock puppet campaign to get a, to get a few shekels from yeah, us. But it's not it's not worth it doing it a few times. I think mm. it's the first the first mm. experiment. You know, the guy who who's first to the Mount Everest or to the South yeah. Pole gets yeah. the reward. The next guy, yeah. he's just saying he's following the trail, and uh, and then we have to offer a re reward for the next thing, which might be to make a market for a week or something. Yeah. Yeah, great, or great. to buy and sell or to create offers i don't know something else but something yeah. new don't, don't repeat because there's yeah. 150 currencies that we could be doing this for so you know sure sure i'm sold but, so what do you feel would be a, a suitable reward say 50 bsqs doesn't sound crazy to me yeah okay. so, so how good. about I do that just for the five currencies I suggested in the GitHub um, issue. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, perfect. Uh, in general, shall, shall we create for each market a separate issue and let, let people who want to participate or be market maker to, to add comments there or just to join different issues so they even maybe can coordinate uh, a kind of a liquidity experiment like we did for the Euro um, Bitcoin market? No idea. My, my idea was to start very small, just creating one issue for each of these uh, Nigerian Naira, Indian Rupees, Russian Rubles, Argentine Pesos, South Korean Won and Philippine Pesos. So coupling Asia, uh, then Russia and then a bit of South America create five or six issues of those and then we can individually target that issue to social media or to known contacts or whatever yeah. and yeah. we'll see from there i honestly don't know what if anybody's going to pay any attention because yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great so so I, I don't think they're mutually exclusive either uh, christoph so so this very targeted issue would be just this bounty right claim it 50 bsq first trade you win right uh, and, and then we could also have some little bit longer running kind of bootstrap, you know, CNY liquidity thread or whatever it is. If we want to give people a place to just kind of have a structured, you know, conversation about it. Sure. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe the easiest thing is to just get that, the issues that Felix is talking about out there, see what kind of interest is, is there, and then, uh, spin up another issue if we see a little action around one of them. There was one question uh, in the chat. Uh, if, if we have a list of, of kind of locales or countries, markets we want to, to go to, um, at, at the moment there is not, but there are lots of big markets. So 
Where I have we? a list. You have a list. Ah, yeah, perfect. I, I definitely yeah. have a list. In <laughs> Africa, we definitely need to try Nigeria and Kenya. Yeah. South Africa already exists, but you know, getting a contact there would be great. Getting someone from South Africa in Slack telling us about what's going on there would be amazing. Uh, in South America, we definitely need to talk to Argentina and Brazil. There's already been a few um, trades with uh, Brazilian Riage, but it's normally an empty market. Uh, in Asia, we definitely, definitely need to do China and India to start with, and then Philippines and Malaysia are also a huge remittance market. Anyway, there's a list. I, I, I'll put the link in the, the X spreadsheet in the Slack channel. Um, I have to recheck uh, which, which locales of, of the app we're supporting. As I think we do support Spanish, and I think we also even have Chinese. Chris, do you remember by heart uh, which, which locales we added in the past? Yeah. I, I don't, could be wrong about that, but um, yeah, no, I, no I, don't have, I don't have them offhand. We have a number of them. Yeah. So, yeah. But I'm also quite sure. I think uh, as uh, I remember Spanish, and as also I think we have traditional Chinese already, so that it should be fine for at least for the, most of the Chinese market. Well, what we don't have, and this is key, right? What we don't have is arbitrators. So, so if people really can't speak English, I have there's, and we're in trouble. And, I mean, we can yeah, go that's the point of getting someone local, Chris. That's the point of getting someone local. If you have to do everything yourselves. You'll never get it done. If you get yeah, one guy from each country to be an ambassador, to promote it, to yeah. be a market maker, and maybe to get a translator, then you know you can spread out the work. That's the point. Well, what I'm talking about is arbitration. Okay. Right. So, so it's no problem, right? It just has to be a caveat at the moment, like. Actually, it makes sense probably for that very first, you know, communication about those trades to actually be in English in, in that market, uh, right? Because if, if we give the, the, the sense that we can speak Mandarin, right, that, you know, that, that, could, be, that could be real trouble. Um, we'd have to run everything in arbitration through Google Translate, and who knows if it would work. It could be a really bad experience. So, but I have a sense, and I don't know if this is true at all. It's just a gut feeling or an or a assumption that uh, anybody who's going to be listening to very first communications like this from us in China is probably going to speak English. Uh, these are very early adopters or whatever, right? So I don't know, just worth saying. Yeah, so, sounds great. So um, I'm just checking. Uh, Chris, um, what I wanted to ask you um, before, uh, yeah. <laughs> We have a daredevil who just oh, fell off. Oh, oh. She's hurting. So maybe maybe you can switch to the next topic. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Okay. okay um, so so Felix, this would be fine for you at creating uh, the issues, and and we I'll do it. perfect. And we add the, the bounty label, and we are we're good to go. Cool. Do do uh, do you have an idea when you when you have the time to do the, do this? Yeah, I'll do it by tomorrow. No worries. Perfect. Perfect. So we can have this up and running quite soon. Um, let me, in the meantime, just quickly check the downloads again. Yeah. Um, the other country where we have quite a lot of downloads, um, but no activity at all, is India. And and Russia. We also have lots of downloads and um, activity on the website, but I also don't think that I saw uh, any, any yeah. Russian trades in the last couple of months. Yeah, uh, Chris, what I wanted to ask you just quickly uh, regarding the, the network uh, issue, do you have the mm -hmm. feeling um, it, it's fine for, for these little, super little experiments, it doesn't matter, I guess, but would it be fine also um, to, to give more push regarding liquidity in, in certain markets to get more people in at this moment? Uh, I, I, I don't think we're in any sort of major danger. Yeah. Uh, blurry of these issues that looked really concerning um, just out of the gate with 063 uh, and, and they've tapered off now. So it actually looks like it might have been 
Tor network conditions contributing to it, that, because nothing's changed code-wise for us. Um, it's a little hard to say, but, but at this point, I'm not, I'm not super concerned that we would um, have a bad experience for, for new users. We're dealing with like one out of 20 trades at, at, the, at the peak was experiencing this, uh, this failed transaction broadcast. And they're all under control and there's no funds lost or anything like that. So I think it's okay. I, I don't think it's like imprudent to do this right now. The only, the, the only real concern would just be spikes in actual, just normal arbitration traffic. Uh, just, you know, distracting from other critical things. But I'd say go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, actually, is there anything else uh, that we want to talk about? We, we have some, some time left. Dollars. Felix? Dollars. USD. USD. Yeah. Is anyone on this call from the United States with a U.S. bank account or payment method? Yeah. Okay. Yes. This right. Is Darren. This. Darren. Well, ha have you managed to complete trades in the United States uh, using Seller? I imagine. Only tried once. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we basically need someone to do a minimal market, and that means one buy order, one sell order. I don't care how wide the spread is, but to be there for a week so that we can start attracting other people and saying, hey, mm -hmm. you can buy or you can sell. Uh, it's, com it's the minimum we need to do. I mean, we ideally, we would do the same thing we did for the euro, which is four or five traders placing multiple orders over a period of a week and oh he's yeah. suggesting a video a step by step uh, yeah we do have it already don't we repeat please uh, okay. we we do have this uh, tutorial video showing the trade we have a tutorial YouTube. video for euros. Oh, for euros, yeah, that's true. Not not for US dollars. Yeah. Ideally, and we've created bounties for US dollars and for yuan and for something else, um, pounds as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone wants to take the video for the for the US dollar uh, thing, that'd be that'd be amazing. We really yeah. want someone to do it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, there, there's also a bounty out there. So for everyone, who, uh, anyone who, who wants to do this, um, you can have a look at um, the Euro um, Bitcoin uh, tutorial that is in our, on our YouTube channel and do the same for US dollar Bitcoin. That would be awesome. That would help a lot. Uh, you know, where do we want to apply uh, leverage first? Trying to, you know, get, uh, you know, get people to, uh, to build up a market with the payment methods that we have, or do we call the shot and say, we simply have too few payment methods and let's implement some payment methods. Well, let's right. focus on the payment method, which is widespread, right? Which mm -hmm. millions and millions of people have. So it can't be Chase Quick Pay, which you know, probably doesn't have that many yeah. users. It's got to be someone that, something with over 50 million users, because we yeah. want to do this for every payment method. So ideally some kind of bank account payment would work but we have to make sure it doesn't have chargebacks or that the chargebacks can be counteracted with, uh, I, don't, I don't know how. We need someone there to test it. So, so we had a guy come along, um, uh, Prane, I think is his name, uh, who picked up the bounty to see how, char how, how risk, at risk of chargeback ACH and, and wire uh, transfers are in the state. Uh, he talked about having some news back this week. That was his plan. Haven't heard from him yet. The week's not out either. Um, so we might get some news on that. Uh, I, I, I'd really just like to see the data, right? You know, what is local Bitcoin's most popular payment method in the States? If it is in fact ACH and, you know, in practice, they're not dealing with this problem or they, or, or we got to see how are they dealing with this problem? Uh, if there is chargeback risk, right? Um, you know, we've been extremely conservative about this, and I think that's been good. But, you know, if, if it's, it, it may be, in fact, too conservative, right? And it may be throttling that. Well, what I've heard back in the day was that Coinbase was having around slightly less than 1% in fraud cases with ACTH. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. What to do about such a thing? I mean, basically, if we're, if we can be, 
totally transparent about that and, and let people know, look, this is the risk profile, right? We, we are not going to make you whole here. I mean, risk for a certain benefit. Uh, I mean, if we, if we use language like that, what I do not want to get into is a situation where we begin to, to make people whole for, you know, that's exactly the kind of uh, centralized behavior that we must avoid. Um, so, so I don't know. I'd just like to see the data come back from his, from his research, from local Bitcoins. Somebody has got to do that, that reaching out. Um, just from, from my side, I just want to say I'm, I'm, I'm all for this. I'm, again, my concerns are that we don't get too much of a spike, right? Because we're already just absolutely maxed out on, um, you know, a bunch of things that are already kind of just digressions and distractions. Um, so, so increasing even more arbitration is a concern, but I don't want to say don't do this either at all. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm for it. it I, I just, I have to disclaim here. I basically can't do anything to support it at the moment. Um, right. But have you, have you thought out how you're going to grow that so that, you know, if, if we get uh, US dollar working and it's spikes, or if we get free and it spikes, uh, have you thought out how you're going to grow the team or create roles or do it, you know, outsource the work so it really is decentralized? When's the DAO being launched, by the way? Yeah, so the DAO has been launched in what we call phase zero. I don't know how much you've, time you've spent with that material. Uh, okay. Sorry. A bit. Yeah, a bit, right? So, I mean, it, it, and that is meaningful, right? You know, we did that, and, you know, we're now voting every month, as you may have seen, right? You know, we're actually going through these motions and bootstrapping things one by one, and it's, uh, you know, roll by roll by roll. I, you know, I'm playing 18 roles right now. Manfred is playing about a dozen. I report on them every month. It's, uh, you know, it absolutely does not work, <laughs> you know? So it's, it, 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 so we, we, you know, we have to attract more people. And I'm thinking a lot about that. If you see the number one priority uh, in the priorities column on the, on the Zen Hub board, which I'm going to be doing some videos about soon uh, to sort of spread the word about how this DAO operates, right? That's actually part of yeah, the- How are you going to recruit? How are you Sorry. going to recruit? How are you going to recruit? And bear in mind that not everyone's going to be you know, there's got to be a few people for who, who this is just a day job and not because they really love the idea and want to see it. Succeed. Yeah, that's right. So, so what I would recommend, right, we just have five minutes before this call goes to, by the way, what I would recommend is, that, right, the plan is in all caps, get more developers, right? That's the epic issue. And I've done quite a bit of writing up there, right? It's very blunt, it's very clear, and there's a plan. You know, that plan's gonna evolve, but it includes, uh, it includes things like actually beginning to market to developers, like very, very intentionally where we start, to, you know, you may have noticed now every single uh, conversation that I have with anybody certainly gets immediately published to YouTube. Uh, by the way, what I'd like to really consider doing for these next calls, right, these next growth calls or anything else we do, literally, let's just do it YouTube live streams. Right, it's, it's less work. You know, I'm having to record this and then upload it and all this garbage. Let's just do live streams, let's announce them, say, hey, come, come hang out with us, right? It's basically, we do it World Crypto Network style for the BISC network, you know? Uh, and, and, and we can just spin one up anytime. We can get everybody permissions to do that and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna start doing, part of that plan, is I'm gonna start marketing isn't exactly a great word, but I do think of it as developer marketing. I'm going to show people everything that we have here that makes it possible to work with autonomy, right? That you can actually come in, own stuff. You can come in, claim stuff, how it all works, how we vote, how the board works, et cetera, et cetera. And, and essentially compete for, uh, in, in a world, we're not competing for users, right? We're competing for developers with a whole bunch of other projects. And I have a thesis here that if people actually had a mental model that was close to correct about what we're up to, they'd be, a lot of people would be damned excited. And the particular demographic that I'm targeting here is, again, another thesis or assumption here. I think there's a whole bunch of people who are right on the precipice of leaving their day jobs, right? They're, they're holding, they've been holding, they've seen what happened, and they're really thinking about making a move, and they may be set up financially to be able to tolerate the kind of equity-only move we're in right now. 
So I do want to shoot for the moon here. I do, we, me and Manfred both, do want to bring on dedicated people. That, that, is, that is critically important for the most important things, like a dedicated peer-to-peer -peer network developer. We, we cannot continue, like, really, we've seen what happened over the last couple of weeks, right? This stops everything when we have network issues. So we have to bring on good, very, very good, dedicated people for that. And I think that now is actually the time. So we're going to be, have some kind of presence at FOSDEM. At least Mike Grisil is going to be there. We'll pass out flyers of some kind. We'll have some sort of message. I'm actually trying to get a hold of the, um, the graphic artist uh, behind uh, Parallel Nepolis, uh, all of their work, right? Like that shirt that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I've been talking to a uh, Juraj there who runs, you know, who helps run that whole show. And he put me in touch uh, with uh, Martin is his name. And he's done all of their, you know, sort of uh, visual work from HCPP and from Parallel Nepolis. Really hope he gets back to me. We'll see. But I want to start to bring art into this story, right? It's not enough. It's not enough to write things down. It's not enough to have uh, code, right? We actually need to communicate also on an emotional level with the people who, you know, there are cypherpunks being born right now. It's like that tweet I put out earlier. I actually want to specifically target this group of developers. We need them yeah. and we need Chris, to grow them, right? Chris, just a heads, out, uh, heads up, uh, we are below one minute. Yeah, no, that, that was the end of my, uh, <laughs> my spiel anyway. Uh, but, you know, we can, we can reconnect if you want or go ahead. Yeah, um, do, do we need more, do we want to discuss this any, any further or uh, do we, are we, are we good to go for, for this, week? this week? I think, I think let's say good to go. We'll upload this. We'll get some notes, yeah. tweet about it. So everybody that was here, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Cool. Thanks, cool. guys. Yeah, yeah, see you, see you next week. Bye. Bye.